to go. Good to go. <laughs> what is going on, guys? And welcome back to another one of these special wrestling retrospectives. Retrospect. Myself, Scott Crusher, Matt from Keep On Collecting. Thank you, guys. Ooh. We are back again. Cheers, Cheers mate. mate. <laughs> um, mm. what, what is this again? Bilson's, Bilson's vodka with creaming soda with passion fruit. And passion highly fruit, recommended. Yeah. Not Let's... not sponsored, but no, you know, we got. Always got got to give love to our beverage of choice. <laughs> they take they uh, take us back to the eighties, uh, nineties. They don't do. They? Passiona. Cre creaming soda. <laughs> creaming soda. With the addition of a little bit of vodka. But enough about that, guys. We're back with another one of these special wrestling retrospectives. Awesome. Um, myself and Matt both share a big love of wrestling, particularly from the eighties and nineties. Yep. Uh, you know, mid late eighties, first half of the nineties for me. Matt uh, continued a little bit longer than that, but yeah, but this is like our definitely you know the the sweet spot for our love of wrestling. Yeah, yeah crossover. That's that's absolutely that's it. To say. We we did this once last year with WrestleMania four. Yep. We had a fantastic time doing it, so we're back to do it again. But this time we're doing it with an event that's a little bit closer to my heart. We're talking, yeah. of course, this one right here, Royal Rumble nineteen ninety two. Remembered by me very, very fondly. On a personal note for me, it was the very first WWF event of any kind that I ever watched. The first pro wrestling right. event that I watched. My introduction to pro yep. wrestling. Yep. And just a fantastic show. And I think I'm probably lucky in a way that this was my introduction to wrestling. Because what a way. The, the event itself, yep. the storytelling of the show, the cast of characters really mm. captivated me uh, it was like a peak almost of, of wwf at the stage just before i guess we got into more gimmicks for the mid 90s but before attitude this was kind of the tail end of well these cla a lot of these classic wrestlers that well, i grew up with you've grown up with absolutely yeah absolutely and I, I remember fairly vividly considering i was only eight years old being at the friends are uh, being at the home of the friends of one of my parents, like, you know, sort of family friends. I, I wasn't really that close with the kids. Uh, I hadn't, I'd only met them a couple of times before, uh, but they were watching Royal Rumble 1992 and I had on no... On TV? Uh, on TV. I, I don't know if it was a recording. I mean, it was in 1992. Yeah. I don't know if it was live. I, I can't remember. Or if yeah. they had a tape. Obviously, back in the 90s, tapes took quite a while to hit video stores yeah. or hit retail. Um, so I, I, I couldn't tell you if it was live or if it was, uh, you know, a recording of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I was fixated. I was hooked, and I, I became a wrestling fan in one day. From there, I was all over the <laughs> WWF magazines that you might be able to catch a glimpse yeah, of, and, of and of course these beautiful, colourful Hasbro wrestling action figures that just perfectly capture that era. So very, very excited to <laughs> Look talk. Look at you reminiscing. <laughs> very excited to talk Royal Rumble 1992 with this gentleman next to me oh. and, and you guys watching. We certainly hope you enjoy. So yep. um, before we rip into it, Matt, mm. when was the last time you saw it? When was the first time you saw it? Yep. Do you have memories of it that go back to the 90s? I do. So I think I first seen it in the 90s. It would have probably been a couple of years. I was laid up in bed with a broken leg, needed to watch some wrestling. And I just delved back into my childhood. 92 Royal Rumble was one of those tapes. So I must have seen it probably about 95. Mid, wow. Yeah, mid okay. So that 95. would have been the first time you saw it? That was probably the first time I saw it. And then since then, I think I've seen it twice more. More recently, probably about five years ago. Yeah. And I, it is a great Rumble. It is. And yeah, the way Rumbles, uh, it's the aged, way you remember them. It's aged well, in my opinion. In my opinion, yeah. it still holds up. So if it's an event that you haven't seen, uh, obviously we're going to provide spoilers as we go through this, but definitely recommend you giving it a watch because in my opinion, sure. it's, it's aged really well. But it was also a product that was very much geared towards kids mm. at the time, which I was. So Yeah, you were. <laughs> Absolutely. But even as an adult... Um, when I was watching it back in the nineties, I remember just go, I remember that guy. I remember that guy. So it was, I totally enjoyed it. And I was probably mid twenties when I first seen it. Yeah. But it's great nostalgia. All those For old sure. characters. For sure. Now we're going to be referring to notes guys. A lot happens during this event. So we, mm. we will refer to those. Um, and, but, but we'll go off them at times. So if, <laughs> if we, we get into it. So a, a bit of context, it's the fifth annual Royal Rumble. Correct. Uh, the first one was in 1988, yep. uh, and then you know obviously we had we had four prior to this, yep. but it is the first time that the, the Royal Rumble match has stakes. Mm. Uh, it, obviously, a Royal Rumble is a battle royale format, 30 men over the top rope, yep. uh, two men start, man, man enters every two minutes, two and, minutes until all 30 one. are yep. in there, and, and uh, the last man standing is the winner. But prior mm. to 1992, the match itself had no stakes apart from the glory of winning the match. Bragging rights, really. 
Absolutely. Yep. But for 1992, we've got a vacant WWF title. The reason for that, we had Survivor Series 1991, and this Tuesday yep. in Texas, The Undertaker and Hulk Hogan traded the belt back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there were some controversial circumstances there. Ric Flair, Flair, who had just made his arrival to the WWF as you know the self-proclaimed real world's champion yep. from the NWA, NWA. Yep. had kind of inserted himself into the title picture by offering up a bit of outside interference in both of those title Correct. matches. Mm. In return, uh, President Jack, Jack Tunney yep. declared the title vacant and it would go to the winner of the 1992 Royal Rumble. So big stakes. High and stakes, And yeah. that absolutely elevated the match. 100%, yeah. So we, I think it was it took place uh, in Knickerbocker Arena, okay. New York, Albany. Albany, Albany New York, York yeah. Yep. I think the, the crowd was 17,000, 19th January, 1992. Uh, and the event itself kicks off in a pretty awesome way. We've got that amazing intro music. <laughs> Vince. We've got Vince. <laughs> With his Just deep voice hammering with out that, that intro. awesome voice hammering yeah. out all the competitors that we're going to see yeah. throughout the course of the event, and uh, and we also get some beautiful crowd shots. And I yeah. said this about WrestleMania four, and I'll say this mm -hmm. about nineteen ninety two. I love the crowds of that era. Oh, they're fully into it. Like you compare them with crowds of twenty twenty three, these guys are into it. Cheer and so many children. Yeah. Families, like parents with their kids, signs. Absolutely. So, and everyone's getting pops, whether and, you're good and, or bad. And they're really emotionally <laughs> invested, but they're... Yes, they are. But they take it for what it is. Yeah, that's they're, right. They're not, they're not like smart marks, as the expression goes now. Yeah, that's um, right. They're, they're really into it, uh, yeah. and, and it's just awesome to see. I love it. It's a bit of an age age of innocence, really, back in those... Pre-internet, pre-social media. Yeah, yeah. pre-attitude era. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Changed everything, so yeah. Everyone's Absolutely. into it. It's like pantomime theatre almost. One hundred percent. It really is theatre. And Fantastic. we've got an awesome commentary duo as well. We've got Gorilla Monsoon yeah. and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Probably my favourite commentary duo. I, I know you're a Jesse Ventura guy with, I with am, Gorilla. But uh, Bobby is he fills that role of Jesse Ventura very well. Perennial, I'm going for the baddies. The baddies are never wrong. Look at the baddies. And Gorilla's going for the goodies. <laughs> yeah, go Gorilla is is kind of the well meaning play-by-play uh, -play guy, yeah. and Gorilla Monsoon's fantastic yeah. at elevating an occasion. Correct, yeah. And yep. and Bobby the Brain's just a fantastic storyteller and yep. uh, and championing the bad guys, and I love it. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Bagging out the good guys whenever he can. Yep. So within three minutes of the broadcast getting underway, mm. we get into our first match of the Straight evening. Into it, yeah. Straight into it. No backstory on why these guys are fighting. No backstory on this first match of the night, and yep. the first match is a tag team match. We've got the new foundation... Jim the Anvil Nightheart, uh, Owen, Owen, Owen Rocketheart, yep. taking on the Orient Express. And I've got to say, as as these guys are making their way to the ring, I'm not super enthusiastic about either of these tag teams. The Orient yep. Express is not really a known commodity to me as far Same. as I remember. Yeah. The new foundation, I'm kind of looking at it as a little bit of a, a poor man's heart foundation, but we've gone from the iconic pink and black to yep. the check bandanas and parachute pants, which is just all wrong to me. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not into it, but I will say that it is a decent very, match. Very 90s. It's very 90s. Yeah. It's it's super 90s, but as much as I'm not super enthusiastic about the match heading into it, I did quite enjoy it. I thought it was a, a pretty good match. 100%. I, I like the complementary nature of the Rockets high-flying stuff with Jim Neidhart's powerhouse stuff. Showcases the Rockets moves, doesn't it? Like when he um he get, bounces off the top rope on his bum yeah. and comes back in, and I'll just some of his moves flying stuff you remember how good Owen Hart was absolutely yeah. it's a good match and and yeah. these guys are very good at what they do you know yeah the new foundation guys are, are good at what they do yeah. they they start to you know really get the better of things it's as it's a very much a showcase for yeah. Owen Hart and it's a tale of two halves um, the it's the first half is that showing off of Owen's uh, ability his high flying abilities some of his technical moves um, and then it all changes. It all changes. Oh. The, the dastardly Mr. Fuji has to get involved. So he gets the cane shot in on Owen Hart. Right in the neck. Yep. That changes the, the swing of things and yep. the Orient Express have their moments um, doing the quick tags and, and wearing down on Owen Hart. Correct. And and it's it's the story's told nicely in the match. Owen Hart eventually rallies. He gets the tag, but the ref doesn't see it. 
Yeah. Uh, and while the Anvil's protesting that, uh, there's there's a move that I really liked in the match where you've oh, got yeah. Mr. Fuji hanging his cane in, in the, the corner. corner. Yep. You've got the Orient Express That's... hitting a big Irish whip on Owen. Yep. Shoulder snaps the cane. Snaps. You can yeah. hear it. Yeah. You can see and hear the cane full impact. Yeah. Shattered a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's and, hanging there in front of him. Yeah. And then the and then the Orient Express continue to wear down on Owen. Yep. Eventually, he does tag the Anvil, the anvil in. in yep. Anvil clears house. With, yes, with, of course. <laughs> with the typical powerhouse stuff, which yeah. which I know and love. Yeah. And and then we've got the rocket launcher. Yes, I can't remember how that all went. So 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 once the anvil cleared house, yeah. the kind of match resumed inside the ring, and uh, Nightheart essentially kind of launched. Oh, Owen that's Hart right. He gets off. on the top rope, and then he grabs him and throws him which onto Tanaka. It yeah. looks nice, but. I gotta be honest. Like, would that actually be more impactful no. than just Owen Hart launching himself? He could just jump off the top rope, but I guess you got to, maybe you got to get Anvil involved somewhere. Uh, look, at the end of the day, good tag team matches have good, good have good yeah. have good kind of double teams. Uh, although it's not supposed yeah. to be legal, they they all have those moments. And, and there was all the way through it. You know, just the the story built that the bad guys are cheating and you know doing. And poor Anvil came in on numerous occasions, only for the ref. Push him back out, and every time and the cheat. ref was yeah. distracted with Anvil, Correct. There'd, there'd be some. So it was just that storytelling, you're cheating, you know, lying, deceit, and in the end, good has prevailed. That's over right. Evil. So the <laughs> way I look at this match is, I wasn't that enthusiastic about going into it because yeah. I don't remember either of these tag teams particularly fondly, but the match itself I liked. I thought it was good. No, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, it was a good storytelling, good showcasing of some talent. Very solid, the bad guys, Tanaka and um, Kato. Yeah, they did really well. Fuji had to get involved. So Good match. Yeah, good match. So the next match of the night, we've got the Intercontinental title being defended by the Mountie up against Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah. Prior to the match, prior to the promos, we've got a, a bit of a, a kind of a, a package from Alfred Hayes backstage recapping how we got here. And essentially, yeah. Brett the Hitman Hart, two days prior, was the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah. He defended the belt to the Mountie with a 104 degree fever. They're really selling <laughs> Brett being essentially on his deathbed That's right. entering this match. <laughs> and essentially, Brett goes in there with a triple digit fever, yeah. loses to the Mountie. It's not enough for the Mountie to win the belt. He's got to beat Bret Hart with the belt after the match. Yeah, really with, push his heels. Really dial up the heat, <laughs> yep. which, which I love. I love that sort of stuff. And uh, and then we've got Rowdy Roddy Piper coming to make the save. Go Roddy, yep. Mountie slides out of the ring, lets Piper tend to his friend Bret Hart. Mm. Uh, but then while Piper's back's turned, the Mountie hops in there and gives, Whacks him as well. gives Piper a whack with the belt as well. So, you know, really building up the, the heat around the Mountie and building up the rivalry between the Mountie and Roddy Piper. Absolutely. After we get this little kind of summary package, we go backstage, or we're still backstage, and we've got mm. some promos from both guys. So, interesting promos from both guys. We've got the Mountie with Jimmy Hart. Yep. Sean Mooney, another interviewer, having a chat with uh, the Mountie. Yep. I can't remember too much what happens there, but... Um... The, the Mountie is talking about integrity. I'm going to take your well, integrity. He, he, says, he says, I'm going to take Piper's dignity. Dignity. <laughs> I'm going to take his manhood and I'm going to take his belt. That's right. We, we then go to a pretty animated, very oh, Roddy this. Piper yep. promo. And, and there's some cool stuff, Piper. He's, he's huffing and puffing. Old school. Old, very old school 80s. Roddy huffing and puffing just and going crazy. Yeah. And, and this is not one note teleprompter promos. This, no, this is, is, it feels very authentic. Yeah. And he says some cool stuff. He says, how can you take my dignity? I've got none. That's how I got this far. Yeah. So even though he's a good guy, he's still, the bad guy he's still got, got some bad guy deep yeah. down and, uh, and he embraces that and the crowd seemed to love it he, he turns the manhood comment by the Mountie into a question of I came to fight what did you come here to do yep and, and uh, it's about the, the the dreams oh he's dreaming it's probably a wet one I'm like and I just laughed oh that, I know that was hilarious I know how did you just get and away with that Roddy <laughs> it's not just what Piper says it's Mean Gene's reactions to and, it and Mean Gene cuts I love it, it. I love <laughs> it. Like, okay then <laughs> yeah that'll do us so we've we've got our promos we've got our entrances yeah uh, obviously the Mountie enters first Piper yeah. enters second gets a huge massive ovation massive pop massive pop and and again this is I love seeing this, like, and and yeah. I love Piper's reaction you get to. Watching it. I love how yep. Piper laps it up, and and, and you can tell mm. he's enjoying it. But it's yep. it's you know I think a Piper is a bad guy, so it's it's uh it's it's unusual, but it's it's amazing. No, absolutely. Like I, I, for me, Roddy Piper from the first WrestleMania, I've loved Roddy Piper. So to see him in this moment, this is what you've always wanted because he's always yeah. been that bad guy. He's never going to get a belt unless it's cheating. But here he is, face. 
getting a massive pop. And it, people love him. And it really is Roddy Piper's moment. So the it match is. is a quick one. In my opinion, it's quicker yeah. than it should have been considering... Absolutely. Five minutes. Considering this being a high point in Piper's career, essentially uh, the match gets underway. Piper starts to get the better of things and really looks like he's running through the Mountie. Yep. The only time the Mountie really has his moments is where Jimmy Hart kind of, I think he interferes. either grabs, interferes in some way, grabs yeah. Piper's legs, whatever the case may be. It gives it gives Mountie a bit of momentum back. Yep. Um, and while Piper is distracted by Jimmy Hart, the Mountie looks to run up on him. Mm. Piper slides out of the way. The Mountie takes out Jimmy Hart. Yep, that's right. Piper slaps on the sleeper hold. One, two, three. Well, not one, two, three. It was like... The three, one, two, three of the arms. <laughs> gone. Very quick, though. And like the bell rang, and I'm like, oh, is that it? Is it something's gone wrong here? And no, that was it. And then like he's won the belt. And uh, they hand him the bell, and that was it. And it's it's fantastic. It's a yeah. great moment for Roddy Piper. You know, you look back on it. It's Piper's only singles gold in the WWF. WWF, yeah, hundred percent. So, and considering all that, I, I wish it was a longer match, especially considering yeah. how long, how much time some of the matches that we're going to be looking at, how much time they had. Yeah. I think it could have been adjusted a little bit. I still like the match, but it, it was more or less a squash match with a little bit of mounty offense as a result of some interference yeah. from Jimmy Hart. That was it. And as, as we discussed off camera that um, there were all the things that Piper has done in the past, eye pokes, biting faces, anything bad, the crowd's lapping it up. All of a sudden, these are moves that all the crowd loves. That's right, but that's not the end of it. Uh, once Piper gets the victory... Uh, Jimmy Hart has the shock stick and looks to use it on Piper, um, but Piper manages to get it off him, yep. use it use it on the Mountie, and we get an awesome game show wrong answer sound effect as, yeah, as, he, as, he, as he's hitting him with the shock stick. Yeah, inserting that, it was just really weird. This yeah, we were, we were talk, I don't know if it was played over the speakers in the arena the or if it was added just to the broad, to the, to the video, to the video recording, yeah. but either way, it was strange noise. It was wrong, but in the best way. <laughs> It made you giggle anyway. I certainly did. <laughs> so next up, we go backstage, and we've got Lord Alfred Hayes with Hulk Hogan in yeah. one of what is a few of these Coliseum exclusive Exclusives. interview yeah. segments. Yeah, that's right. And it's interesting because it's not really a normal Hulk Hogan promo. No. It's, it's more the kind of Hulkster that you'd get if he was doing like an, a public appearance at a mall. Like he's very friendly and affable yep. to, to Alfred Hayes. He's not the intense match-ready Hulkster that we normally get. No, not the, you know, say prayers and eat your vitamins, you know, and blowing, and huffing and posing. It's, it's, it's a very like, you know, I'm not going to have any friends shortly, so... You know, I'm giving you this for five minutes, yeah. two minutes, and then you're yeah. out of here. Yeah, Lord come Alfred on in, has. my friend, because pretty soon the Hulkster's not going to have any friends. But it is, it's yeah, a, it's a kind of, a, it's really a mellow good. Hulkster. So it's something a little bit different. Yeah. And, and from there, it's time for our next match of the evening, which is mm. another tag team match. We've got the Bushwhackers taking on the Beverly Brothers. Beverly Brothers, yep. Bo and and we'll, Blake. we'll rattle through this one pretty quickly, because it was not a high point of the evening to me. Yeah, it's neither uh, of our but, favorites, but, yeah. In in my opinion, it took up a bit of time that would have been best devoted to Piper Piper's and the Mountie. Yeah. Uh, essentially, we have a promo with the Bushwhackers backstage with Jamison, Jameson, yep. who is not really a face that I remember from not at all. that era of the WWF. He's this kind of nerdy, this nerdy... Something you'd see in a movie, you know, with a tape around the glasses, a tape around the straight, shoes. Straight under Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, and and from what I understand, Jameson is essentially a character that was working the stand-up comedy and improv club scene in New York, and Vince yep. McMahon actually uh, saw one of his shows live on a night out with friends and thought, hey, listen, let's bring this character, let's bring this Jameson character into the WWF, and that's what they did. <laughs> Good on you, Vince. So, so we've got the Bushwhackers with Jameson taking on the Beverly brothers with the genius following yep. the bushwhackers promo we get a poem with the genius and uh which didn't even rhyme i, I just went, it oh, didn't okay. even rhyme uh <laughs> we then we then have the bushwhackers making their entrance and they get a huge pop uh the yeah. crowd are absolutely loving them oh, it's, which is good to see like these guys are perennial um what do you call it jobbers or talent yeah mid, mid carters at yeah best. so this is probably one of their highlights i'd say in the wwf um, and, and they're doing Bushwhacker stuff. They're doing the Bushwhacker march. They're licking young fans as Bobby Heenan recoils in yeah, horror. That's right. They're doing rubbing their head and wiggling their tails like little dogs. And that's right. All the now, what stuff. I remember thinking at this point when I was watching the match is, why didn't we get Beverly Brothers Hasbros? Because although they weren't... The, I don't think of the Beverly Brothers like I think of Legion of Doom or the Nasty Boys or the Natural Disasters or Money Inc., but mm. they would have made great-looking Hasbros. Absolutely. like, And you know, they would have had capes and the nice white tights and 
they were around for a few years. So just a, just a side thought as I was watching this. Now, mm. again, this match is longer than I thought it needed to be. Um, we have a lot of stalling. We have a lot of playing to the crowd. Yeah. The, the bushwhackers make their way into the ring really slowly. They do the bushwhacker march. They clear the ring. They play to the crowd. And it takes a good few minutes before the match gets the underway. the first time is good. I, the first I, I time like is the good. first time they, they march around the ring. The first time something. is good. That was good. And, then, and then we get two or three of the exact same sequence, more or less. Mm. We get the Beverly Brothers getting the advantage. We have the Bushwhackers uh, reversing through a, a Bushwhacker move, like a bite or, or a battering ram or something <laughs> like that. They clear the ring and they do the Bushwhacker march and play to the crowd. Yeah. And it's the same thing again two or three times. Two more times, I think it was, yeah. And it just gets a little bit tiring. It to does, watch. it does. They, yeah, as you said, they could have just cut that short by seven or eight minutes, given it to another match. They, they, they definitely could have. It sounds harsh. You know, my, my, my notes from this match is this kind of yeah. like deja vu, rinse and repeat of the Beverly's getting the advantage, the Bushwhackers reversing, clearing the ring, marching, playing the ground. It's the kind of thing that I would have loved when I was eight years old watching it. But yeah. as an adult now, even though I still watch this through the lens of a kid because, you know, that that's this is the era of my childhood, I'm still getting a bit over it. But <laughs> essentially... Action finally resumes. The Beverly's get the other hand, get the upper hand. They're working over Luke with quick tags. While this is happening, the genius sneaks up on Jameson, smacks him like Will yeah. Smith at the Oscars, and uh, and <laughs> you know Jameson kind of He's like, oh no, what what did you just do? Oh. Yeah, it's 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 weird. Um, I'm I'm over it at this point, but. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the Bushwhackers get, kind of have their moment. They get the upper hand. There's a double team from the Beverleys, and while the Bushwhacker that's outside of the ring, whether it was Butch or Luke, is protesting, um, yep. they, they they double team the Bushwhacker that's inside, inside the ring. Yeah. We've got one of the Beverly brothers holding, the other one hitting the axe handle from the top rope yep. and getting the pin. So the Beverly brothers win this match. Again, yep. 17 minutes or so. How, what did you count um, this? 15 minutes? 15 minutes it was. Just 15, 15 minutes. Yeah. Longer than it needed to be. Uh, yep. But even though the Beverly Brothers win the match, the Bushwhackers have the final say. That's right. They, 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 they get, get back the in. They, they, they clear the Beverly's out of the ring. Yep. They get their hands on the genius, and Jameson gets gets his uh, gets his payback, which, again, is just... It's lame. Is overblown, is oversold. Yep. You know, it's Jameson, like, winding up, you know, again and again and again, trying to play up to the crowd. <laughs> and Bobby, it... Bobby in the commentary is like, he can't even hold his fist like this. He's holding his fist like that. I'm going to hit him like this. And... But brain's given him, giving and, him and, a mouthful. And, and fair enough, like wind up for the crowd once yep. or twice, but he does it again and again oh, and again yeah. before eventually kicking the genius in the shin. And it's, in the shin. <laughs> look, it's it's fun. Like it's a it's it's a fun match to position in the middle of the card. It's something for the kids, yeah. but it just Correct. in my opinion it goes for too long. When the when the when Roddy Piper winning the Intercontinental Belt had five or six minutes, this yeah. shouldn't have fifteen. The only thing I can think of, actually, I thought about this later and I should have mentioned earlier, was the reason they, they gave, I think, Piper a short match was he was going to enter in the Royal Rumble and maybe just to prevent injury or tiredness. That's a good point. They probably just, let's cut this on short. He can spend a long, and he did spend a long time in the Rumble. So That's a good that point. I, I hadn't considered that, but you're probably right because that story was being sold by the commentary team throughout the evening is Piper's pulling double duty. He was the yeah. only wrestler that pulled double duty. Yeah. None of these tag team wrestlers... Made appeared. their way into the Rumble, yeah. and like you said, he had a good stint in the Rumble, as we'll get to. Yep. Um, and you know, the, there's the story about how he has the chance to end the night with both belts. Two belts, yeah. So yeah, I mean, he was probably never going to get a 15, 20 minute match. Correct. That, yeah. that, that does make sense. Yeah. So next up, we have our final match before the Royal Rumble match, which is yep. the main event. So we've got the co-main event, and it's yep. it's another tag team match. A lot of tag team matches on this card, and we've got the WWF Tag Team Champions, one of my yeah, childhood favorites, if not my favorite childhood tag team the legion of doom oh, really i didn't know that defending their Excellent. belts against the natural disasters yep. earthquake and typhoon so we start with a backstage promo from the legion of doom it's yep. their typical intense delivery oh, how do they not have sore voices I know. they are screaming into the camera i know we've we've got the you know what a rush we've got all the usual yeah. sound bites uh we've got a comment about you know natural disasters want to throw their weight around that's fine we don't mind throwing their weight around that's, as well so that's right. This is just a match between four big, strong dudes. Very, yeah. And uh, and it, look, it's 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 nostalgic for me. I love both these tag teams. Like I said, Legion of Doom were my favourite tag team from my childhood. I had two pet mice in 1992 that were named Hawk and Animal. Really? Yeah. That's so <laughs> so yeah, I, I loved them. I was big into the Legion of Doom. We have the entrances, and one thing that I made a note of that was really cool 
is when the Legion of Doom make their entrance, they're, they're really Ooh. over at this point. Oh, I, even when they came back in the late 90s, um, yeah. early 2000s, my son and I, lo- they still had that music and that, Whoa, and you just, yeah. that is excellent music. And we'd, For just, sure. we'd walk around the house doing it. They're so good. <laughs> but, but one thing that I made a note of that I really like is we've got a shot of a, of a kid in the, you know, in the front yeah, of, yeah, of the, audience, the audience, and he's yeah. wearing those Legion of Doom spikes that you could buy out of these WWF <laughs> magazines. Yes, that's right. And one little thing that I love to see when I watch these old 80s and 90s WWF broadcasts is I love seeing people with merchandise that I remember seeing in these WWF magazines because I used to get these magazines from the news agency every month. Yeah. And I used to circle stuff in the merch guide even, and then take it to my mum and be told, no, 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 you're not ordering that. <laughs> uh, I think it, I think eventually I managed to get a, a pair of those um, cheap kind of uh, Brett, uh, Bret Hart's pink oh, sunglasses yeah, yeah. out of the WWF magazine. But I, I love those LOD spikes. So to see a kid in the front row with those was awesome. <laughs> If he had a dad like mine, he probably would have made them. <laughs> so, so Legion of Doom make their entrance, and it's amazing, yeah, and the match gets yeah. underway. And Legion of Doom are absolute tanks, but they're just completely yeah. dwarfed by That's what makes the, the match so disaster. interesting to me. Like, four big guys, and you're sitting there, even at this age, looking, and I can't remember this match too well, but you're watching who's going to win this. Look at these guys. They're huge. The power in For sure. between them all. Oh. And, when you, and when you watch Legion of Doom matches, they power through their opponents. Yes. But yep. to see them get bullied by the natural disasters, yeah. it's, it's, it feels big. It feels cool to see. So, mm. um, But it, look, this isn't a match of, of high-flying and technical maneuvers. We, no. get a, we get a lot of squaring up and posturing, and, a, and we, get, we get a lot of those tests of strength to start. We bounce off the ring and bang into each other. Who's going to move first? That's right. Yep. So um, Animal and Earthquake go at it. They're running the ropes, and Animal's got yep. serious speed. It's, it's, oh. it's actually really impressive bang, to see. Bang. Yeah, like that. And double clothesline. We get yeah, we get the double clothesline. Yeah. So um, so that that's a good spot. Animal tries to slam Earthquake, but he can't, and he it's a failed falls slam, and he falls him. back with the quake that's on right. top yeah. of him, and yeah. and that allows them to get the upper hand over, uh, over over Animal. Yeah. Um, and they hit him with the avalanche. That's right. So they get yeah. him in the corner and hit him with the yes. avalanche. So there's some there's some interesting moves there. Oh, my, my note here is I enjoy this match, but it is, it's all collisions. Yeah, and how about John Tenter or you know, Earthquake getting up, is standing on the spot, gets up to try and do a drop kick on Hawk. He misses because that's part of the, the match, but that, that was impressive. Yeah. Big man. Er- earthquake hitting the big drop kick, and, and although he missed getting up, and like that right after Animal did the yeah, same, it was actually really cool it. to see. Um, so basically hawk gets tagged in he has his moments but just like animal he starts to get worn down by the natural disasters yeah. we have the earthquake put him in a bear hug, bear hug and yeah. we have the earthquake doing that move where like he walks over him like yeah, steps, steps over him on top of them, and yeah. i watched that like he's not holding on to the ring rope so he's, he's not he's not his full weight on yeah which yeah. which is pretty crazy to see i mean you you, you can't like really fake pounder. that and i mean earthquake's probably billed as what 400 Pounds yeah, yeah, yeah. plus. I mean, yeah. whether he weighed truly four hundred pounds, who knows? Because I know a lot of the build weight tonight's are ramped up, but yep. there's no way that guy's less than well, three hundred and fifty. Three fifty. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's so that, a lot of that, poundage that, on you. That's pretty cool to see. Um, we've got Hawk getting worn down. Eventually, he gets Animal yep. in, and we have Animal full of beans hitting the double clo- jumping double clothesline, taking out both of the natural yep. disasters. That's right. <laughs> we've got all four men brawling outside the ring as we reach the conclusion mm. of the match. Uh, which it's still pretty cool to see all four guys going at it down on the floor next to fans that, whose faces are just lit up. <laughs> and interestingly, uh, weirdly, yeah. uh, Typhoon, who's the legal man, gets back in without dragging in his opponent and yep. therefore wins by count out. So yeah, they win by count out, yeah. we've got the natural disasters winning the match but not winning the belts because they, yep. it, it wasn't a pinfall or by, or by submission. We've got Jimmy Hart grabbing the belts and celebrating as if they don't know how the rules work. Yeah, that's right. And Grill and Monsoon's have to, having to explain having to it. Explain. I mean, we all know, but yeah, we know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just weird. So And then the natural disasters, they get back in with the chair. They give a the chair. LOD. Yeah, they get Is that back. what I said? Yeah, and they yeah. natural disaster. Oh, sorry. <laughs> LOD. Legion, <laughs> Le- Legion of Doom get back in yeah. uh, with the chairs. They've lost the match, but they've got to have the final word. Yeah. And uh, and we've got both natural disasters hitting, uh, getting a chair shot. Yep. And uh, they drop the belts. And... and a pretty cool, like, what animal, I think, throw, or Hawk throws the chair to animal and does an Irish whip into the chair. Yeah, that's right. He to, does to, to finish yeah. it off. And then we've got the natural disasters having their moment. And. You know, when you watch matches from this era, you have a lot of you have a lot of 
crowd favourites losing a match but having the final word and then having their music and having their moment. That's right. <laughs> which is kind of interesting to see. So my thoughts overall on the tag team titles match is that mm. I enjoyed the match, I enjoyed the action, I just yeah. thought the ending was a bit of a, a whiff. I would have much rather have a clean finish, even if the disasters won. I just yeah. I just thought it was I just thought it was a bit of a, a soft ending. Like the natural disasters, one of the top teams, champion contenders, they might have yeah. they might have hold, held the titles did previously. They eventually hold the well the, not that not yet, but they were due to the But either them either way they're in the title picture and they don't yeah. know how to win the belts. And Jimmy Hart, a manager, he starts selling like he doesn't know. Uh, I found the ending a bit disappointing. There was yeah. elements in the match that I did really enjoy, mainly who these teams are, uh, being being nostalgic um, favourites of mine. And backstage we get a, a, a wild promo, a you know post match into post fight interview with the Natural Disasters and Jimmy Hart. Jimmy yeah. Hart's threatening to call his lawyers and his attorneys. Yeah. He typical, can't understand what the other guys are saying. <laughs> typical Jimmy Hart fashion. And the Natural Disasters are just raging oh, so hard that I can't on. even understand. I couldn't even tell you what they were saying. No, but they were angry. Upset. They were upset. <laughs> Absolutely livid. <laughs> so, so that's the undercard done. Now it's time to get the Royal Rumble underway. Before that, obviously, you know, we've got a little bit of talking. We've got a little bit of, you know, some backstage interviews. First up, we've got Roddy Piper with Mean Gene. Yep. Celebrating his title. And yep. it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, he's happy. Dude can act. I mean, it's, th yeah, there's absolutely. no wonder he made his way. He was one of the few guys to make his way into regular films. And hence why he's so popular. Like, he's transitioned into films. I think at the end of 91, he's... He's turned face yep. due to the popularity from his films and just being a mainstay of WWF. Um, Absolutely. And this is his shot and he's he's happy. Celebrating the Intercontinental Celebrating. Belt, pledging to go all the way and have 29 guys fallen down like President Bush, <laughs> yeah. which is obviously a reference from 1992 that, that I, I can't place. But either no. way, it was an awesome promo. Then we've got Sean Mooney interviewing Sean Michaels. Mm. Now, the Rumble was a week after the famous barbershop incident was aired on TV where yeah. the Rockers, the tag team, the Rockers split. We had Shawn Michaels double cross his tag team partner, Marty Jannetty, super kick him, put him through the plate glass window yeah. in a really iconic interview Ooh. segment, one of the most memorable ones of my yeah. childhood. And hot on the heels of that, just one week later, prior to the Rumble, we've got Shawn Mooney interviewing Shawn Michaels. And I thought it was pretty cool. Shawn Michaels was in his you know, in that iconic Heartbreak Kid getup. So he had the white with the reds with the red kind of uh, patterns there yep. and he's got his shades he's got his earrings and he's very much in that heartbreak kid gimmick yeah and yeah. at least as far as i can tell that might be royal rumble 1992 might well be the first appearance of Shawn michaels yeah. as the heartbreak kid fresh on his heel run absolutely <laughs> We've then got Ric Flair with Alfred Hayes in yeah. one of these Coliseum exclusives, yeah, right. and it was cool. Um, you know, it was it was cool. Ric Flair announced that he is entering number three, and mm. throughout the whole evening, so the show's been going for a good hour and a half at this point in time, and we've got yeah. Bobby Heenan constantly speculating what number yeah, did what Flair, number? did yeah. Flair draw. You know, he's he's saying a monsoon. I want to go backstage. I haven't been able to hang out with Mr. Perfect and Flair yep. all day. I've been here with schlubbing it with you, <laughs> and he's you know constantly trying to find an excuse to go backstage because he is the advisor of Ric Flair. Correct. Yeah. And try and find out what number Flair drew. So obviously, the number that Flair enters into the Rumble is a big question at that point in time. Yep. And I actually thought it was a bit of a miss that Flair blurted it out to yeah, I don't, to no, Alfred Hayes prior to the match. Mistake. Yeah. I think that was a bit of a mistake, but in any case, Ric Flair's looking a million bucks, announcing that he's entering number three, and he's going to, it doesn't matter because he's the real world's champion, he's going to win at all odds, yeah. and he, he pledges to go all the way, and we're really setting up that story. Then we have these quick hit promos where there's no yeah. interviewer, it's just, it's just, the, just wrestler the wrestler in like a tight frame doing like a quick 15 second promo, so we've got the Macho Man saying he wants to get his hands on the Snake Man, we've got <laughs> Sid Justice sweaty and intense Ooh, yeah it's gross <laughs> through gritted teeth that <laughs> is one intense oh, man oh, yeah. we've got the bulldog pledging to go go all the way and make it a truly a royal rumble we've yep. got jake roberts jake roberts one of my favorite guys on the mic from that era yeah. um in typical sinister fashion promising to save some for savage We've got Ric Flair with Mr. Perfect to be the man. You have to beat the man, all that good stuff. Yep. We've got The Undertaker with Paul Bearer, yep. who has prepared 29 hearses, 29 caskets. <laughs> I love it. We've got a far more hyped-up Hulk Hogan. 
yeah. telling all the Hulkamaniacs not to worry about all the cheap shots, which is interesting because Hogan comes out with a very uh, memorable cheap shot in this match. So Hogan <laughs> is uh, much more hyped up than we saw him in the Coliseum exclusive, mm. telling all the Hulkamaniacs not to worry about the cheap shots, not to worry about you know the, the cheating from so-called friends. Uh, but you know Hulk Hogan's got a special plan. So Hogan mm. has the last word. But interesting, prior to that, in amongst all these quick hit promos from stars, the Ric stars, Flair, yeah. Sid Justice, The Undertaker, Hulk Hogan, we've got the Repo Man having a having a quick Go word. The in Repo there, Man, which I found a little bit out of place because <laughs> these are all stars, but we've got the Repo Man delivering his promo like he's telling a secret. Psst, come here a little closer, and it's just it's it's a break from these you know superstar large, intense ca- superstar. larger than life characters <laughs> yeah. uh, but it did seem a little bit out of place to me and i have to say like when i see the repo man deliver these promos or characters like the repo man characters like St- um skinner i kind of have to wonder like i was eight years old at the time so i was lapping it up but the adult audience how did they take that seriously i mean like for instance you know in the 90s like yeah. did you just kind of enjoy it for what it was it was theater yeah, it was pantomime so. you didn't kind of take it no if you, if you were a serious wrestling fan you might have had a bit of bit of trouble Maybe I just enjoyed. He, he had a gimmick. He was sticking with the gimmick, and I think as a fan, you just watch it. You know, it's not real. So That's you just right. enjoy the um, what he's giving to you. That's right. Yeah. Um, so now it's finally time for the rumble. We've got Howard Finkel announcing the rules and the stakes, and interviewing yes. Jack Tunney, who reminds us that who has the belt, and he reminds us that the winner will be crowned the WWF Heavyweight so Champion. Is he boring? Jack Tunney's boring. He, he's really boring. But the other thing about Tunney is I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Like mm. when, when Hogan delivered his promo, he said, you know, don't worry about that no good Jack Tunney. But when Tunney was making his way to the ring, Bobby Heenan called him on the take tu- on, on the take Tunney. So, so it's what like, is he? Yeah. Or, is he supposed to be? Is he supposed to be like the voice of justice? Is he supposed to be a villain? Mm. Uh, it, it's hard to know what's going on there, but. Uh, or maybe it's just like a referee in a football game where neither team no likes, one likes him. him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So the time for talk is done. It's time for the rumble to get underway. So we've got some yep. big names coming in right Ooh. off the bat. Entering first and second, we've got the British Bulldog and yep. the, million, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. So some big names right off the bat. Now number one and two, they get the full entrance music, the full yep. entrance theme. Yep. Comes at, out with sensational sherry. At that point in time, yep. I'm kind of wondering if every entrant is going to get the music obviously they don't it's just for number one and two so and guys as we run through this rumble we're going to be referring to our notes because we're talking about 30 people going in 29 people going out lots of uh, moments and and eventful incidents along the way so we're going to be referring to our notes throwing things at you (laughs) <laughs> but but first of all, obviously we've got Davy Boy Smith and DBOC getting underway. Yeah. Ted DBOC tosses Davy Boy Smith over the ring. He thinks he's out. Davy Boy Smith pulls him back in and and gets DBOC out. Well, Ted's caught posing at the at the ropes there and uh, he gets clotheslined <laughs> over the top rope by Davy Boy. And I've got to say, like <laughs> DBOC is one of my childhood favourites in terms of the heels. I would have liked to have seen him do a bit better. And he had done better in previous Rumbles, so you <laughs> kind of expect him to go a little bit further than two minutes because yeah. he got knocked out right on that two minute mark. He got, he got knocked out right when number three came out, so yeah. that was a little bit disappointing, but but again, this is not DiBiase's night. No. Um, so DiBiase not goes out, DiBiase. and and the Bulldog's there on his own awaiting the third man in. Yep. Flair enters number three mm. to a chorus of booze, looking like, <laughs> looking like a million bucks. Uh, and Heenan yeah, is furious good. because obviously we know that Flair is entering third. Bobby yeah. Heenan doesn't. Well, is he not listening to interviews? What's going on? That's Bobby? right. So, so, <laughs> so that's the big reveal. And Heenan absolutely loses his mind. Monsoon tells him he yeah. can kiss it goodbye. Yeah, you're going to lose. <laughs> and, and reminds us that no one's entered early and been there all the yes. way to the end. But yeah. I don't know if you noticed, there's a really cool shot as Flair is making his entrance where like the camera kind right. of pans to the very end of the entrance and kind of greets him along the way and it just makes Flair look like a superstar yep. and one thing that I noticed throughout this match as we get through is there's a lot of close-ups on Flair like the production is very much focused on Flair he was almost, the main man. Yeah. He, almost kind of foreshadowing yeah. how the match Definitely goes. Definitely pushing him and I think at this point they tell you the the current record holder of the Rumble is Rick Martel for 53 minutes and 14 seconds. So That's right. It's going to be hard to beat. Flair using the heel tactics early, combating the power advantage of the Bulldog with the eye pokes and the trademark, no, reverse psychology. (laughs) So, so, you know, Flair is very much playing the heel. We've got Nasty Boy Sags entering number fourth. Yes, and he teams up with Flair. Teams up with Flair. Or Davey Boy. (laughs) Against Davey Boy Smith. 
Davy Boy Smith counters, clothesline sags over, and and then to the floor where the drop kick and turns his attention yep. back to Flair. And yep. we find ourselves during this match a few times with the Bulldog and Flair back to them. Yeah, that's right, yeah. We've got Haku entering fifth, distracting the Bulldog yeah. from Flair, and they double-team Davy Boy Smith once again. Once again, yeah. But it's kind of cool because, like, Haku kind of... He does turn on Flair, and, and you hear Bobby bring him, What are you doing, Haku? Doing that? And gets him in the corner, and he's slap. There's some hard That's slaps exactly going right. on in there. We, we, when, when Haku turns his attention to Flair, we get the first of about a million, this isn't fair to Flair. <laughs> and and another tactic that Flair uses often, which is just such a great heel tactic during a Royal Rumble, is like sliding out under the bottom rope to safety oh, and yeah. taking a breather. Yeah. And Heenan constantly encourages him, get out to safety, take your time, you know? Yeah, because Haku does that, and he, he run, he's going to chase um, Flair, and he goes under the rope, so of course Haku just goes to Davy Boy, and as he's pounded on Davy Boy, in comes Flair again. That's right. Yeah. So we've got Davy Boy Smith tossing out Haku yeah. and turning his attention back to Flair. Yeah. As the man I just referred to previously, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, enters yeah. number six. Yeah. We've got uh, Shawn Michaels going after both Bulldog and Flair. Interestingly, yeah. dishing out super kicks. Yeah. But they're yeah. not at that point in time they're not switching music. They're not switching music and there was probably a couple of misses in there. I think there he, was some caught, really bad ones. Yeah, he caught Flair on the back, but Flair kinda of just went with him. That's right. Kind of he's he's definitely still working on his, yeah. his super kick at that point and in time. Interesting to know, this is sixteen years prior to Flair and Shawn Michaels hooking up in that just that iconic two thousand and eight retirement match for Ric Flair. So to see them sixteen years prior no, in a match together, you just go, I know where this is going. It's like a full circle. Very cool. Very cool to see. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, we get an interesting spot here where yep. Davy Boy Smith clotheslines Shawn Michaels out, but he hangs on and stays in. Like, the Royal Rumbles always uh, has those moments where mm. opponents look like they're out and they and they, and they, they, come get themselves they back power in. themselves back up. Yeah. Then we get an awesome move where... Davy Boy Smith does the Irish whip on Shawn Michaels into the corner, and yeah. Michaels ends up straddling the rope. Yeah, that's right. And Davy Boy Smith shakes it up and down. <laughs> it happens a lot in the younger days with Shawn Michaels, or even through his career. It happens a lot. Definitely. <laughs> um, then we've got uh, El Matador, Tito Santana, yeah. entering seventh. Arriba. And he and Flair get into it as... Um, mm. Santana and attempts to get him out. Yeah, he's trying to get Ric Flair over. And it's, it's funny seeing spots where they're clearly holding one another in. Yes. Like there's a there's I made note of a of a of an incident here where Shawn Michaels is like hanging out, he's posting up on the apron with one yeah. hand and Davy Boy Smith is clearly holding him in. Yes. <laughs> Flair with more heel tactics, and Flair yeah. does this a few times throughout the match. We've got a low blow from a kneeling position to the bulldog. And yeah. Ric Flair's low blows, they're not just like a s not just like a quick like dick punch, like no. he's like down on one knee and like with the with the full arm up under in between the legs and like <laughs> I suppose like I suppose, like... Exaggerated, I'd, what isn't would, it? Listen, what would you... Would you rather cop, like, a fist to the nuts or, like, someone's arm? Like, of course I... <laughs> Nothing? No, of course, of course. But, like, when I'm watching these... It. When I'm watching these low blows, I'm like, how is, like, a bicep to the balls, like, worse than a fist? But I suppose it's... I suppose, like, you've got 20,000 people... It's a bicep or a forearm? What, look, whatever it is. But yeah. I suppose, like... You, I suppose like it's more visible, like you show, you know. It's, Correct. I think it's all. It's about more that, visible yeah. to pantomime to, theatre again. Isn't that's it? Yeah. that's one hundred. Because if you right. just go like that, people might miss it. But if you go and boom and leave it there just for a quick second or two, the ins and outs of low blows. Beautiful. Who, who knows? Who knows what we're talking about <laughs> on the show? show in itself, is it? <laughs> that's right. So we've got Barbarian entering number yeah, eight, and that, yep. and at this point in time, we've got five men in the ring for the first time. So the ring mm. is starting to fill up just a little bit. And, and Flair is constantly avoiding one-on-ones at this point in time. It's all yeah. about it's all about how can Surviving. he how can he double team? You know how can he come in as the third man Correct. and double team the use, good guy? Yeah, use other people to help him out. That's right. Always avoiding one-on-one. -on -one it's just situations. A, it's a slow build. This first part of the rumble I've noticed is a slow build. Let's get some numbers in the ring and then get someone in to clear it later. So That's anyway, right. We're building on. And another thing that Ric Flair is always looking for opportunities to do is take a rest in the corner. Yeah. So when there's <laughs> when there's a, an odd, when there's an odd number of men in the ring and people are all tied up, he'll just take a rest in the corner right. and Bobby Heenan loves that. Yeah. He yeah. loves when Flair you know, get slides out or in, takes Rick, a rest. Get your big breaths in. <laughs> that's, that's it. We've got Texas Tornado entering number yeah. nine, beats on Flair. And again, yep. that's something that we see throughout this is a lot of guys will make a beeline for Flair. Well, they've got history. That's right. So 84, uh, Kerry Von Erich had taken the title off Ric Flair, the NWA title. 
Uh, I think like a month later or a week later, he, he took it back off the Texas Tornado. So they got a history eight years back, but... That that would be kind of like a deep cut for a fan, though, wouldn't it? Like it is. It's more about going and knowing your territory knowledge. I, I think you know one hundred percent. But yeah. for those that knew the uh, the territory knowledge, they would have loved it. They would have recognised sure. it. But for the broader fans, it's it's more just building the story that Flair has his back against the wall. Correct. Because they're and all everyone's, gone. For everyone's him. after Flair. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. Um, now, after Texas Tornado gets done beating on Flair, we get our first Flair flop. Yeah. <laughs> I love the flare. Is that what it's called? The flare flop. I don't I love know. It. It's, a, I'm, it's the front flop, isn't it? Yeah, like he, he but he, he like takes like a few steps yeah, forward. Yeah. Like it's very pantomime. <laughs> it's, I love it. Yeah, I love it. It just every time it happens, I laugh. You never That's get right. sick of it. I and mean, I think at, at this point, also they make a bit of an announcement saying we're 16 minutes in. Um, I think it was because Davy Boy's still there, so there was 16 minutes in. Yeah, there's this constant count. They, there's a constant count. It it just kind of builds the. F- it builds the Ooh. the feet. It builds the task yeah, up and kind of elevates correct. it. They're, they're constantly reminding us how long these early guys have been in there. And we definitely start to see a diff, uh, we start to see at this point in time a difference between the fresh guys and the guys that have been in there from the start. Correct, yeah. There's, I love how Davy Boy's hair becomes all curly. I know. Front. It's he's bizarre, obviously isn't a little it? slick and he's got his beads. But yeah. After the first few minutes, it's all like starting to get curly. Maybe I need to give the David Boy Smith haircut a run. Maybe I should have done that for some, this. Some beads. <laughs> yeah, some beads. <laughs> uh, so, so now we're up to number 10. So we've got yep. Repo Man entering number 10. In typical pantomime style, he's creeping, sneak, he's creeping his way mm. up to the ring. And we've got seven in the ring at this point, so it's starting to get chaotic. Yeah. We've got Flair again with the double teams always. So at this point in time, you've got the Barbarian holding the Texas Tornado to allow Flair to come in yep. with the reverse knife edges. Flair yep. always looking for opportunities to double team. We've got Greg Valentine entering 11th. 11, yep. Straight after Flair. And then, of course, more history from the territories. They, for years in the NWA in the late 70s, were into each other. Massive feud for years. And so that's why he's gone after Flair. But to a new person it's yeah. all about building that storyline it's, it's all about showing that flair is up flair. against it he's yeah he's not safe from anyone but brilliant. brilliant excellent yeah the story is is told and it's mm. sold through the commentary team beautifully yeah. we've got nikolai volkov entering 12th and now we have nine yeah. in the ring flair's copping it from all angles uh yeah. heenan laments this isn't right monsoon says i think it's fair yeah. Heenan, not to Flair. Yeah, I, I love all the this. I love all the, this isn't fair to Flair and, yeah. and Heenan and uh, and Gorilla Monsoon work together just beautifully. <laughs> Greg Valentine slaps a figure four leg lock on Flair, and yeah, uh, he, Heenan almost has a coronary. Yeah, We've got, no, no. <laughs> it's brilliant. Now Repo Man has an interesting little run here. Now remember, I know. Repo Man. He got himself a promo along with the superstars just before the yeah. match got underway. And he gets two back-to-back eliminations. So Repo yeah. Man dumps out Valentine. Yes. And And Volkov. And Volkov. So yeah. he goes he goes back to back. Volkov only lasts about a minute, which That's is right. surprising. That's anyway. right. And one thing that I noted here is um we've got number thirteen about to enter the ring, and every yeah. time every time we get to that final ten second count, the crowd are chanting. Yeah, ten, and, nine, and it, bu- and it builds that anticipation, and yeah. and we don't know who's coming each time. So there's <laughs> That's that what we used to love about the rumble. There's that unpredictability of yeah. it. Uh, number thirteen is of course the big boss man. He sprints down the aisle yeah, and, yeah. and unloads on everybody. No one's safe. Yeah, everybody in the ring who I think is like eight or nine others just goes around to each individual and bang, 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 bang. He uh, gives it to everyone. Great. Yep. And like I said, at this point in time, I'm thinking the Repo Man's having a good showing. He got himself a promo somehow with the yep. other superstars. He took out Volkov and he took out Valentine. Yep. And just when I think, hang on, maybe they're building Repo Man into something. Yep. Boss Man throws him uh, out. And he was funny because he was doing a creepy across the ring. like, And then Boss Man just comes up and throws him out. I'm like, oh, poor Repo Man. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, now, So seven left in the ring at this got, stage. Yeah, we've got yep. seven left in the ring. But here we have a quick turn of events where where a lot of people go out. So Flair tosses out Davy Boy Smith and Texas Tornado back to back. Yes, yep, yep. So, you know, he's worn down, he's tired, uh, Heenan's championing his cause, but he's still yep. a threat. We see him get two eliminations back to back and a bit yep. of a shame to see Davy Boy Smith go out. But now yeah. that means Flair has been in there the longest out of everyone. Yeah, now Flair's the man, yep. Um, and after getting those two back to back eliminations, he takes a rest in the corner as Shawn Michaels and Tito Santana take one another out. Yeah, because there's five left in the ring. So as you've mentioned, as soon as there's an odd number, Flair's having a rest. That's right. And of course, El Matador and, uh, yeah, Who's Shawn Michaels there? Just 
fall out of the ring. Yeah, so like Shawn left. Michaels kind of tosses out Tito Santana and goes yes. after him. Yes. And and yeah. the interesting thing there is it's actually a little bit of a disappointing showing from Shawn Michaels because yeah. we've got him breaking out into a singles competitor. Correct. We've got him getting the love with the promos and so on. But he the only person he eliminated was Tito Santana and that was like a double elimination. Yeah, so yeah. Well, I guess it just, as you said, wasn't his day. That's right. So three uh, left in the ring now. So we've got Hercules entering 14th and going yep. straight after Flair, just like at this point in time, everybody seems to do <laughs> before turning his attention to the boss yep. man. Now, Flair does something here that he does a couple times. He, he does like a high five to try to like build an oh, alliance. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, barbarian. so he gives Barbarian yep. the high five, yep. and then when his back's turned, he hits the Barbarian. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And Mo Mo Gorilla Monsoon calls it out as a, as a sucker punch, but then as, yeah. as Barbarian turns his attention to, to Flair, uh, he uses the reverse psychology, you know, the no. Yeah. <laughs> Backs up into the corner, but then Barbarian hits him with, like, the big press slam. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the big gorilla. Pre Is that what they call it's called? Gorilla yeah. press slam or something? Well, I anyway. think, I'm not too sure. I was trying to work that out myself. Like, yeah. the, Undertaker, uh, the Undertaker, the Ultimate Warrior did the gorilla press, but he was yeah. like, he would just kind of, like, throw it up and get out of the way, whereas Barbarian oh, yeah. kind of slams him down. Yeah, true. But, but whatever it is... Flair's getting hit with like finishing moves. You know what I mean? Mm. He's, he's, at this point in time, he's had a figure four leg lock on him. He's been press slammed. Um, he's been super kicked, although yeah, not not really. Not, not really. <laughs> and then the barbarian, he's he's trying to get Ric Flair over the top rope. Hercules pushes them both. Like, pushes them both. Flair hangs on, and the barbarian's gone. That's it. So we're just yeah. down. We're just down to Flair and the Big Boss Man at this point. Well, it? yeah. Well, then um, I think the Big Boss. So Hercules has done that, but then the Big Boss Man comes straight in and pushes Hercules over. So then you're back down. Yeah, you're back down. But, to but boss I think. Man but I think it, it looks like Flair thinks that the Boss Man's out. He does. So, so, so like, he kind of thinks. Yeah, he thinks, like this, yeah. Like, uh, but, the, but then he turns around and the Boss yeah, Man's staring right straight at him. Right at him. Yeah, that's right. So it's just those two. Yeah. So yeah. So obviously, Boss Man unleashes on Flair. Yeah. Heenan's coming out with beautiful comments. He's saying, "I need oxygen." You know, like he's going to pass out. <laughs> yeah. so, um, at one point, Bobby's saying, "I need to go down there and help him be by his side." And yeah. the gorilla's like, "You sit right you stay down here. here. You got a job <laughs> to do. You're a broadcast journalist." <laughs> because funny. obviously, Heenan always declares himself, "I'm a broadcast journalist." <laughs> It's so good. Um, now, at this point in time, we've yep. got Boss Man trying a running move on Flair to yeah, take him out. The flying elbow Flair ducks, yep. and, and Boss Man... Flair doesn't actually eliminate the Boss Man. It's his own momentum yeah, that kind of takes him out. flies over the top ring. <laughs> anyway, yeah. That's and then, right. So, and, then, and then, so Flair's in there, there by himself, himself yeah. does a big Flair flop. Yep, and he's, he's, he's sucking in the big ones. He just gets up, and you can see he's sucking the big ones, and that's when Bobby's, like, saying, come on, get the air in, the, uh, get the air in. Yeah, take a breather, Rick. <laughs> Slide right. out to safety. And in the countdown. Ten. Counts down to counts down to number fifteen and who's coming in? It's Roddy. Your boy. <laughs> Running in. <laughs> and and when and when we see it's we, we get an awesome shot. When we see it's Roddy Piper coming mm. in at fifteen, there's a close up shot of Ric Flair's face and yeah, he like visibly like, winces. Oh yeah. Exactly. It's incredible. And a little bit of history of those two guys. From eighty to eighty three, they they were in NWA together. They had fought four over forty singles matches and forty tag team matches in that period of, of just under so three plenty years. plenty of history. History there galore. But once again, it's all about, for me, people like me loving yeah. that, but for people like yourself and young, they don't know that. Yeah. And it just gets flair. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, we're halfway through the rumble at this point in time. Halfway. And flair is completely exhausted, completely spent. Yeah. He's copped it from all angles. Roddy Piper's coming out fresh. Obviously Roddy, Roddy Piper had pulled double duty, Yeah, but he's still coming in fresh. I'm loving this. This is where it's, for me, the rumble picks up into a little bit more um, of an extra gear. They've yeah. got rid of a lot of the talent that we're not going to go too far with them. Now let's get the, this is the business end. That's right. Um, but Flair slides out to safety, so Roddy yeah. Piper has to actually go and toss him in yeah, so, he, right. so, he can, yeah. so he can get underway um, and, and just really goes after him, throws him back in, drops punch. Yeah. He does that spot where it gets him into the corner, stands up on the middle rope and starts dropping punches as the crowd count. Yeah, but it didn't last long. And then, like, uh, Flair sort of after, I think it's five or six, Flair grabs him and does an atomic drop on but, him. But Roddy no-sells it. He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> What's, going What's going on? Anyway, it was fun. I mean, maybe his manhood was taken. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Mountie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and at this point in time, so we've got Piper getting him up in, like, a fireman's carry, doing yep. the airplane spin, yep. and then slapping a sleeper hold on yeah, a disoriented yeah. David yep. Ric Flair. I thought uh, there was a moment in there where I think Flair adjusted... Uh, you could see maybe he had on too tight and he kind of adjusted the arm so he wasn't actually choking him. Oh, oh, well, I remember thinking, oh, that doesn't look like a particularly tight sleeper no. hold. 
No, but it, it must have been a point where it wasn't. Yeah, for or sure. It was uncomfortable, so he's kind of moved for his sure. arm. <laughs> but when the sleeper holds on Ric Flair, Heenan's like sobbing mm. at that point in time. It's, it's brilliant. Another finishing move. <laughs> That's another finishing move. Now, number 16, we've got my boy Jake the Snake Roberts coming in yep. to, to very audible boos. Yeah, you know, he's very yeah. over as a heel at that point in time. Sure, yeah. And the thing I love about this is um, Jake Roberts kind of comes in and he just slides in and sits in the corner and goes, no, 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 you guys yeah, have you it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, you have it, Roddy, you have it. But not for very long. That's it, that's <laughs> it. But, but what's really cool is, you know, I'm, I'm, there's all contrasting styles and contrasting psychology. Yes, you know, some guys are coming in and going after everybody and unloading, yep, and yep. some guys are just like, I know what this match is all about. I know this is a marathon, so I'm mm-hmm. just going to sit back and let you guys have yep. that. And a lot, and a lot of like, you, no, no, you, you go at it, and then double crossing kind of thing. Yeah. So as as, and I'd have to say that these three performing um, at the top of their game, it really made me smile. These three guys have got a lot of a lot of history behind them, a um, lot of experience in the in the territories. And for those two minutes before the next entry comes in, I'm lapping it up. One of those three. This is one of, believe it or not, one of my favourite Rumble moments. Just really? The, just these three guys. The Very way cool. they interacted. We've got another one of these uh, kind of teased alliances. Flair offers a hand to Jake. Yes. Jake accepts it, but <laughs> then drops Flair with the short clothesline. <laughs> Here we get a moment that I really love. Yeah. So Jake signals for the DDT. Yep. prepares to slap it on Flair, yep. but Piper intervenes. So and funny. Heenan goes, you know, Heenan kind of champions uh, Piper. Like, it's, yeah, not a, it's not a kilt, it's a skirt. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> but then Flair slaps a figure four on Roberts. Piper yep. attacks and Heenan unloads the skirt-wearing freak. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's like in the space of less than a minute. Heenan's amazing. His, his commentary is amazing. He really is. <laughs> now we're up to 17, so we've got Hacksaw Jim Duggan coming in. Big Win- pop, isn't it? Winner of the inaugural Royal Rumble in 1988. Yeah. Heenan continues to sell Flair beautifully. Mm-hmm. He says he's been slammed, he's been backdropped, he's been put to sleep, and he's still fighting because he's a champion to the end. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's excellent. We've got IRS coming in number 18th. Yeah, and this and is where they kind of say it's a 36-minute mark for Flair. So, they, once again, time check. And Monsoon points out that every time the buzzer goes off, mm. Jake the Snake's looking over his shoulders. Yeah, for Randy. Looking for Randy, yeah, Savage. Randy Savage. So yeah. so building that clash that we're going to get. Yeah. Um, yeah. Superfly Jimmy Snooker enters at 19th. Yeah, yeah. six and, in the ring, yeah. And Heenan's in an absolute state. He said, I don't know how Flair can take much more. Maybe the, <laughs> maybe the WWF title isn't worth it. This could be career ending. <laughs> a couple of big headbutts by Jimmy Snooker. And I really thought Jimmy and Roddy may have a moment because from dating back to the 80s when he cracked a... Coconut, Coconut on uh, yeah. Jimmy Snooker's head, but there's no real interaction there. I mean, but seeing the response that Piper's got and the, the crowd favourite character that he is, we're pretty far removed from that Roddy Piper. Yeah, I think so. Exactly right. I think that was a bit of a different era for WWF. We're moving into a new era with Flair. Let's focus on Flair and uh, what he's going through at the moment. So it, it, it's, it's a good call. For sure. Yeah. So at this point in time, the next person to come out is number 20th, and we get Ooh. Monsoon, Gorilla Monsoon, telling us that we're now up to the point at which The Undertaker and Hulk Hogan could come Ooh. out. Because that yep. was one thing they didn't mention to us on the broadcast prior, at least if they did, I missed it, was yep. that because Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker were the former champions who yes. vacated the belt, who Jack Tunney you know, vacated the belt from, they had a preferential draw. They could only draw from t- 20 from to, 10 30. to 30. Correct. Yeah. So um, we, we, we get that information. From and of right course, up. we count down to number 20, and The Undertaker comes out with Paul Bearer. Yeah. And I've got to say, because The Undertaker is one of my favourites. Again, like I grew yeah. up on an era of wrestling where it was all about cartoon characters mm. and very clear heroes and villains and gimmicks and and you know it was it was everything was colorful and larger than life and the suspension of disbelief that there could be a dead man in the WWF and yep. so and but bec- so I love the undertaker but because this was my first event this was my very first introduction to the undertaker yeah, exactly. okay so that's it's, interesting that, yeah. that's pretty cool to rewatch um so we've got the undertaker yep. entering number 20th yep. uh, with Paul Bearer and he he goes straight to work he tosses out Jimmy Snooker and yeah, chokes Flair in the corner <laughs> um again as you said we keep getting these reminders of the duration that Flair's been in there yep Macho Man enters number 21st, in. yep. enters an absolute sprint and we yep. get this awesome dual camera angle where we have a, a shot of Macho Man sprinting down the, down the entryway ring, yeah. at the same time as we can see the Still ring the from an aerial view yeah. and we see Jake the Snake slide out Snoops and out hide the behind the, the ring. Yeah, that's and right. and it's awesome. Like Savage have Savage like sprints into the ring and he's like looking each and every way. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even see him sneak out of the ring, so I'm going, Oh, 
Did he just get eliminated, Jake the Snake? And then I seen him sneaking in. I went, oh, okay. But when Savage is looking everywhere, he runs straight into the Undertaker. And yeah. when and when you know Savage starts copping a beating, Jake Roberts recognizes that as his chance to get back yes, into the ring. That's right. Yeah. Um, but then Macho Man breaks free and attacks yep. Jake Roberts, double, double axe double handle axe from the handle. top rope. Yep. And he and uh, at this point in time, Savage, he's hit Roberts with the double axe handle. He eliminates him. Yeah, knee in the back. He Jake goes over. And inexplicably, one of my yeah. one of my as we're going to call it royal fumbles. Royal fumble. Randy Savage eliminates himself. He vaults over the top rope yeah. and goes after Jake goes Roberts. After Jake. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we've we've got a storyline here where revenge on Jake Roberts is more important to Randy Savage than winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah. There's a lot of history prior to this. We had the wedding of uh, Miss Elizabeth mm. and Randy Savage, which uh, Jake, you know, spoiled with the with the, the cobra snake. in the wedding gift. Yeah. We've had the slap. Uh, he we've slapped had, Elizabeth. We've had Randy Savage caught in the ring ropes yeah. and the Oof. and the Cobra biting him. So we've got Oof. all these amazing moments of history building mm. up this clash. So it's no surprise mm. that that winning the Royal Rumble is of less importance to Randy than getting revenge on Jake Roberts. That that yeah. that that's fine. But the way he eliminated himself, yeah. but then but then the Undertaker comes out. The Undertaker comes out and he grabs Macho Man and throws him back in the ring. And Macho Man, it's like he's just got blinkers on and he runs back out to uh, get Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. I think that... Yeah, I, I think that's part of the story. I, I, thought, I think uh, Randy Savage and Jake Roberts should have just fought their way back yeah. down the entryway. But, I was but, but Savage finds his way back into the ring again. Yeah, well, then Undertaker is very insistent, and I'm not sure why we've missed something, but... Once again, he throws Macho back into the ring. But and, and then time. Macho Man kind of gets back on with the Rumble, yeah. and we have this moment where, after announcing that he'd eliminated himself, mm -hmm. Bobby Heenan and Gorilla Monsoon have to kind of like yes. reinterpret the rules. Oh, it turns out that you've got to be propelled by someone else to be eliminated. But we've obviously had the Boss Man accidentally eliminate himself, and he didn't get the same privilege of getting he back just in. So over Rick Flair, didn't it's yeah. clearly a botch. Yes, and they've had to botch. kind of. You know, the commentary team have had to cover for him anyways. Yeah, so we'll, six in the ring at this stage. Six in the ring. Berserker yeah. enters 22nd, and yeah. we get an awesome close-up shot of The Undertaker choking Piper in the corner with the <laughs> eyes rolled back. Yeah. And again, guys, this goes yeah. back to my first experience of The Undertaker. You yeah. know, I'm seeing these guys that are... I'm seeing these guys that are competitors, that are wrestlers, uh, that are characters, but The Undertaker is just that character to another extent, this dead man in the ring. Yeah. And to see him in the corner with that close-up shot of, of the his whites in his eyes... Yeah, while he's choking, while he's choking Roddy, and and the Undertaker does a lot of cho you know, there's a lot of moments of choking in this match, which yes, yes. which which is yeah, you know, it's pretty cool for an eight year old Scott Crusher watching. <laughs> I think he's previous to that he'd already done that to Ric Flair in the middle of the ring, just yes. straight after he'd done thrown Jimmy Snooker out, he got he into, did yeah he did he went straight for Flair and and, uh, and choked him. We've got Virgil entering twenty third, yeah, going straight, straight after IRS, IRS obviously. Yeah. You know, Virgil, a, a former kind of uh, money, uh, money, money Inc. Yeah. stable member, yeah, has, has that history. Up. Yep, yep. And uh, Heenan makes a comment speculating about how many bags Virgil's stolen from while the match has been underway. Do you remember <laughs> okay. that? No, I missed that one. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy when you think about Heenan making a remark like that. Like, obviously, the match... Yeah, okay. So, Virgil enters 23rd. So, the match has yeah. been underway for, like, 45 minutes at this yeah, point in time. Yeah, 47, apparently. They and, need another time. And, and Heenan's like, oh, that's a lot of time Virgil's had backstage to, to be going through people's bags. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, listen, it's 1992. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Bobby the Brain's a bad guy. Of course. Virgil's done a face turn, so, of yeah. Of course. Yeah. Colonel <laughs> Mustafa, obviously the Iron Sheik, Iron Sheik uh, yeah. enters 24th with General Adnan, and we've got nine in the ring. Yep. Uh, the model Rick Martel enters 25th, the current record holder in terms of the duration, I yes. believe. Yeah, about 53 minutes, yeah. 52, <laughs> 53 minutes the prior year. So Depends on who you ask. Kind of, kind of cool having <laughs> Martel there, you know, the marathon man. He, we know at this point in time he's going to be one of the kind of final few guys. Yes, yep, yep. Colonel Mustafa is eliminated by Randy Savage. Yeah, much I mean, gets rid of him, yeah. Axel takes a break from the rumble to call, from a, call for a USA chant from the crowd. That's right. <laughs> he took a few breaks. That's it. <laughs> Good old Axel. Yep. N now we're up to 26th, of course. Yeah. The Immortal. we got Hulk Hogan Hulk entering Hulk to Hogan. a massive pop. So obviously yep. Hulkamania is still alive. Yep. And it's absolute chaos at this point in time. That's why I've got to refer to these notes. We've got 10 bodies in yeah, the ring. It's, yeah, a lot of people are starting to get in that ring. And Heenan is going through this uh, this kind of cycle of emotions, and I love it. So Heenan's now <laughs> resorted to begging. 
Sorry for everything I've said. Sorry for everything I've done. Just let Flair win it. I'll be a different person, I promise. <laughs> so he's been trying to make a promise to God or something. Is he? <laughs> to, to God, to Monsoon. I, I don't know. Who, who, but it's just awesome. Uh, and Hogan head straight for The Undertaker and Ric Flair. Yeah, obviously, um, obviously there's a ton of recent mm. history going on with those guys. So Hol yeah. Hogan clotheslines The Undertaker out and he tosses yes. Berserker out. And he rips yeah, his shirt. Yeah, he rips the shirt. Yeah, the whole... <coughs> yeah, and then the shirt is used constantly from here on in. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, the shirt's ripped open, but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't get tossed out of the ring. It kind of stays there and is stays used the ring. to... to they, they start choking one another with the, yeah, with the torn yeah, shirt. choking each other. <laughs> Hacksaw Duggan throws out Virgil, but goes with him. It's like yeah. one of those similar situations that we had with Shawn Michaels and Tito Santana. Yeah. We've got Skinner entering 27th. Yeah. Uh, Heenan again brilliant he says I'm soaking wet and he barks to an assistant hey stupid go get me a drink yeah. he goes I need a drink Monsoon <laughs> Monsoon obviously says no you can't go anywhere so, <laughs> so we hear Heenan hey stupid go get me a drink <laughs> to one of his apparent many assistants yeah that's right. and when Skinner comes in I'm watching I'm watching Hogan in the corner with Flair and Flair is punching him in the corner and he's just no selling and he's just, and he's kind of he's not hulking up quiet yeah he's just staring at him like Bang! Nah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so we've got Sergeant Slaughter there in 28th. And at this point in time, yeah. just, just think about some of these iconic wrestlers that are either at the top of their game or not yeah. far from it, all competing at once. It's We'll talk yeah. about it at the end when we kind of sum up our impressions of the Rumble, but just the, the, the cast of characters and, and real superstars here is incredible yeah skinner gets eliminated by uh rick martell that's right and it's announced that yes rick flair is now the record holder of <laughs> being in there being in there the longest time in all the royal rumbles that's it For um fun. we've got number 29 sid justice entering yeah. getting a huge pop yeah like he was over he was absolutely over and monsoon actually you know gorilla monsoon makes a mention he calls out you know Mm. You know, he's, the crowd's going wild for Sid Justice. He's a he's an uh, big big man, like an uh, ominous character, like a big frame. He's fucking he's, jacked. He is fit. He's massive. Like it's the best you can like. You see Sid throughout his wrestling career. This is the best that he's. Yeah, I mean, he's huge. Yeah, he's young, but he's looking great. He's huge. Yeah, and he and he's sweaty and he's intense. And even though he's obviously a crowd favorite at this point in time, mm. there's there's a scariness to him. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's always, a, especially coming in number twenty nine. Well, he comes back as psycho Sid, so he's always got he's always on edge. But Sid's always been on edge. Being the being the star at that point in time that he is, mm. him coming in twenty ninth. Yeah, you, know, you have to be watching this thinking, okay, Hulk, Hulk Hogan's here, Sid Justice is here. It's probably yep. going to be one of those two guys. Yeah. Yep. Then uh, Heenan demands that a camera stay on Flair at all times. Says Flair must have <laughs> lost over ten pounds. Uh, Warlord. Character. That's right. Warlord <laughs> enters thirtieth, yeah. um, and Sid Justice Irish whips Slaughter into the corner over and out. So Sarge God. goes out pretty quick. Yeah, I was so, so super surprised. And that was, um, I've never seen Sarge, he was quite agile. They've thrown him quite hard and yeah. he's just gone, that's the corner. He's gone straight over the, that's the corner, not just the middle ropes. No, the pole, like the I'm corner like, post. Wow. Like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, 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 into the, cor into the corner to then propel out. It was, yeah. it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, we've got Hogan uh, hitting Flair with the big boot to the kisser. Now I know, yep. I know that the big boot's not Hogan's finisher. Uh, technically, the leg drop is, but it's a lot of like you know, real kind of big moves or finishing moves yeah, that Flair's yeah. copped at this leg, point in time. Up to the leg drop, yeah, that's right. That's right. So we're down to six. So we've got Flair, Piper, Savage, Hogan, Sid, and Martel. Correct. Yeah. And and realistically, I think it, Martel maybe not because he was the model Rick Martel. He was a bit of a side character at this point in time. Yeah. But yeah. realistically, at least five of those guys could believably have won the rumble the, at that yeah, point be, in time. Yeah. I know. Right. Be a champion. Uh, that's right. Um, so, but then it, it gets down to it real quick. Sid tosses yeah, out both Martel and Piper together. Yeah. Piper had been in there for more than 35 minutes, and I'm a little yeah. bit disappointed to see him go. Yeah, I am too. But, yeah, he already had the Intercontinental. He already had the IC so belt, and he, it's, he's still been one of the stars of the show tonight. Yeah, he had been. It's a massive, massive, uh, I don't know, for him, a paper, this pay-per-view was a lot of, of Roddy Piper. That's right. Yeah, so now we're down to four. We've got yep. Flair, Sid, Savage, and Hulk. Yep. Ric Flair and Sid combined to get Savage out of there. So we're down to three. Yep. Uh, Hulk kind of puts Flair over, but he yep. doesn't he put him out. On. He kind of slides yeah. under. And yep. then Sid pounces and takes advantage of the opportunity to dump the Hulkster. Knocks now, Hulkster out. 
from what I understand, like kind of going into this, there was an yeah. alliance there between Sid and Hulk, like that they were on the same team to a certain extent. Yeah, that's right. I that's what I agree with too. Well, I only read that later, but yeah, they yeah. were supposed to be on the same, had a bit of an agreement, and to be backstabbed by Sid, yes, is livid. <laughs> but but apparently, from what I've read, the crowd actually cheered when Sid eliminated Hogan. They did, didn't they? But but when I watched, I don't know about you, but it it almost. Was it cheers in the, in in the version we watched? Because mm -hmm. that, from what I understand, yeah, the crowd in the arena actually booed when, sorry, the crowd actually cheered when Hogan went over when Hogan went out. Yeah, but apparently some versions of the broadcast have been have been booed, changed, piped in boos when Hogan went out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I, there's a bit of controversy around that. Oh, okay. Anyways, Hogan's out. He's absolutely livid. Yeah. And I don't really understand how... I mean, it's an every man for himself situation, but obviously uh, Hogan is furious that yeah. his championship's been taken away from him by Sid. And, he grabs his arm. Or and he, he grabs Sid Justice's arm. Yeah. And Ric Flair uses that as an opportunity to come up from behind. And Put both of them effectively dump Sid out. And we've got yeah. Flair... Number three, the real world Goes champion, has gone all the way against all odds. Uh, he's been beaten from pillar to post. He's been put to sleep. He's been choked. It's all right still. And, uh, and he's already in his 40s at this point in time. Oh, is he? Like, Ric Flair is not yeah, in his 20s at this point. No, well, he's born Flair's in 49, so he would have been about 43. Ric Flair's had a ton of history at this point in time. Oh, yeah, he's so, in the 70s. So for yeah. him to do what he did and be in that age, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to be the man. Um, but really, uh, it's a very uncharacteristic heel move from Hulk to pull Sid out. Like, that's one thing that I, I kind of remember about uh, this okay, is yeah. like, fair enough. Okay, cool. We want to make it uh, Hulk Hogan's the man and Sid Justice yep. is supposed to be his friend. Okay, cool. You shouldn't be because it's every man for himself, but be yep. furious. Rant and rave. But, he, but the fact that he actually interfered from outside yep. and effectively decided the rumble for in Flair's favour is very heel I mean it's a pure heel it move is. I, and at the end also um, I'm a bit confused like uh, I see Ric Flair wander out and I thought and then Hulk Hogan comes into the ring you know and gives him a mouthful as he's walking away and I'm going why is like the, the last pay-per-view that we did you know Wrestlemania 4 once again Hulk Hogan has come in at the end and taken the limelight away from the person who's actually won and I just is this something that's quite common, quite common with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Oh, mate. But this... I know later on it was a bit more to set up with yeah. Sid. Sid comes in; he's still there. And yeah, for sure. So everyone's so, trying to break him. So up. yeah. So obviously Flair wins the Rumble against all odds. Heenan is, ah, man, he's a st ecstatic man. He, he's yeah. <laughs> he's excited. He's so gone. And so so at this point, obviously Flair goes backstage. Heenan's yeah. still on commentary, uh, but yeah, we've got Sid back in the ring, Hulk back in the ring, and there's, there must be a dozen officials trying to keep them separated, trying to break him up, yeah. really building that feud and and. You can hear, although they're not mic'd up, you can hear what, what Sid's saying. You can hear him saying, I'll kill you, I'll rip your head off. So he's it, Sid's very much playing to heal yeah, at that really point in time. It. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And Furious. I don't know, there was a few... This is where it's interesting about the jeers and the cheers. And there was a few people in the audience that didn't look like too happy with Hulk. And I could see Sid pointing to a few people yeah. jeering Hulkamania. Uh, so what I read about that was I read that the response in the arena was very favourable when Hogan was eliminated. Yeah. But but some versions of the broadcast actually have boos when Hulk, Hogan's eliminated and cheers when Hulk pulls Sid out. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Very like, confusing. Uh, I okay. can't, to be honest, I can't quite remember from the version of the broadcast I watch which way it was. But mm. I, I, definitely, I definitely remember seeing fans cheering when Hogan went out. Yeah. It'd be interesting if we could watch this. Yeah, He'd good probably point. Have a, have a good version. But but look, in any case, Sid was very popular at that point in time. It you was, can yeah. you only have to see his uh, entry uh, yeah. to to know how popular he Another is. So pop, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be some fans divided. But in any case, mm. we, I just found the heel move really weird. But uh, yeah, Flair and um, Mr. Perfect are backstage at this point yeah. in time with Bobby. Uh, Sid and Hogan have their big moments setting yeah. up, obviously, WrestleMania 8, which is why I've got this tape here. Yeah. And uh, and then we, we, we go to that backstage promo with, with Bobby Tony. Heenan, Mr. Perfect, uh, Ric Flair being yeah. presented the belt by Jack Tunney. Jack Tunney, yeah, correct. And it, it's an incredible promo. This is what Ric Flair is so known for, just yeah. getting into the camera and selling it and just, oh, he, the way he just expresses himself and... It's just brilliant. Yeah, Rick, I mean, obviously, obviously, you've got the very famous with a tear in my eye. This is the greatest moment of my life. 
One thing that I like that was kind of interesting is yep. obviously uh, Flair's coming in and Heenan's already kind of advocating for him yep. being a champion because he's the real world's champion. He's come yep. in with the big gold belt. Mm. But when Flair cuts the promo with the WWF title, he says... This is the only title yes. in wrestling that makes you number one. So he, yeah. so he's basically elevating the WWF title to higher than where, yeah, when he came in with whatever he came, which in is with. really cool. Like, like it's he's not just, yeah. yeah, he's not just selling himself. I mean, but he, the, the fact that he elevates the belt and he says this is the only title that makes you the man. Yeah, yeah. And you'll pay homage to the man. Yeah, that's and right. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a cool, uh, cool promo. Definitely. And yeah. then Mean Gene signs off and sends us to a highlight package of just yeah. still shot highlights throughout the broadcast. And that is it. I'm sure we've been going for a very long time, but I'm having too much fun talking about this. So yeah. um, what a great event. Uh, thoughts? That anything we haven't said already? Um, there was a few things, I, I guess, just behind the scenes. Like, uh, did you, I don't know if you noticed how Macho Man, when he was in the ring, he, well, as you've said, he brought very little to the Rumble itself. He probably should have fought, fought Jake off. Um, but there was no interaction with Hulk. They've had a mm. lot of history prior to this. You watch that Rumble match. I don't think that there was no interaction that I yeah. could see between Hulk and Macho, which was yeah. kind of strange. It, it was it was strange. I suppose um, he had his own kind of feud taking the yeah taking it and all, and all, it's interesting when you do think of the way it happened with uh, Hulk Hogan and Sid Justice though, because Hulk Hogan's had th this storyline is almost one that's played out before. Like Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage were. The mega powers and that, nights, and obviously yeah. at, at a previous rumble, Hulk <clears throat> eliminated Tugboat, and they were previously yeah. allies. So there's been a few situations like this. Okay. Yeah. No, the rule. Uh, it was a, obviously uh, one of my favourites. I think the following year was it '94. I really enjoyed as well. One of my favourite rumbles as well. Yeah. Oh, but this one's got everyone. This one. Well, and that that brings us to this. So to me, there's a few things that make this rumble very special. Obviously, yep. you've got the stakes. Prior to this, like we mentioned, no prior rumble had any sort of prize or championship implications mm. on the line. After yep. this rumble, all the rumbles were stipulated that the winner gets a shot at WrestleMania against the champion. So this was the point at which the rumble started to really mean something. Yes. Yep. Um, the fact that Flair entered as early as he did because no prior Rumbles had anyone entered in the first half of the draw. You know, you look at the prior Rumbles, the, at least th three of the prior four were won by a competitor that entered 24th or later. And, okay. I, and I know that since then, obviously, we had number one win. But yes. at that point in time, for number three to win was a huge feat and was really, mm. really fantastic storytelling. Um, but the other thing I was going to mention, to your point... The, the sheer star power, like, l listen to this, Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter, The Undertaker, Jake Roberts, Ted DiBiase, Shawn Michaels, Tito Santana, Rick Martel, The British Bulldog, Sid Justice, Iron Sheik, of course, Ric Flair, I mean, that's that's probably more than half the field, were, were, at, were superstars either at this point in time, yep. prior, or, or later on, so... 100%, there's just so many names, massive draw. That's right. Like, would there be another Royal Rumble like this? I, I Maybe it, not. Maybe we can find out. Maybe we can watch a few more of these mm. and, and do this again. But um, you know, the shock of Hogan being eliminated was definitely something that I didn't I didn't really pick up on that as a kid because this was my first event that I watched. But if you had been into the WWF for the years prior to this Rumble, you'd seen Hulk win the last two, yep. and you'd seen him come in in twenty sixth, I think. Yep. You know, it ha like and get down to the final three. Like it, you, you would probably be thinking, "Hey, look, this is probably Hulk we probably know what we're going to see here." Yeah. Correct, yeah. So that was obviously a big shock. And we talked about that with WrestleMania for the shock of crowning a new champion. Yes, it's always yeah. cool when you have uh, you know, a face of a company finally changing a, mm. a little bit. So that's always cool to see. Um, another special thing, the commentary. You know, the chemistry between Monsoon and Heenan was incredible. Oh. The, the verbal storytelling of, of Bobby Heenan's, you know, really complimenting what we were watching was Going incredible. through the emotions, you know, one minute his man's on top and he's like all good, then he's like facing the challenges, he's like begging for mercy. That's right. It could really sell up Bobby the Brain. And and I think another thing that just made it really special, and I've read it off a million reasons why this is my favourite Rumble, mm. and, pro and possibly my favourite event of, of you know, <laughs> of my WWF viewing, was what makes Royal Rumble special is you've got opportunities for so many different people to cross paths that normally wouldn't 
Yes, you know, good yeah, guys yeah. and good guys, bad guys and bad guys, yep. mid-carders and superstars. And you have the opportunity to tease alliances, to tease feuds, and get the Ooh. crowd's response to that in real time. That's why I used to love them too. For sure. Yeah. But to have Ric Flair come in as the NWA champ, mm. and, and and he'd only he'd only just recently, you know, the late the year prior arrived. Yeah, like and, September. Yeah, and here he has the opportunity to cross paths with so many different characters that were truly established in the WWF WWE, as superstars yeah. at that point in That's time. That's right, yeah. And uh, allow the WWF to really work out, hey, where are we going to go with this? Yeah, yeah. He Pretty really special. wanted to, He was going to be the man. Absolutely. So that was the deal that he, uh, he had signed with WWE. He's going to be the man. The main, and, main, main draw card, and and obviously that promo at the end is is just a fantastic way to finish the event. So yeah, that was it, yeah. So that's it. I mean, awesome event. Um, yeah. Absolutely loved it as a kid. Had a fantastic time watching it again last week, and had an awesome time watching it with you as well. A lot more nostalgia probably for you than me. But Super nostalgic. But... In a certain ways, it was a, it was an event that I I'd never seen before when I'd first seen it, and. It was a part part of my life where I kind of was getting back into wrestling. So yeah. it does mean. A yeah, bit so I mean, me. this is where wrestling started for me, whereas this yeah. was getting kind of back into it for you. But yeah. I think that's what makes this fun is, you know, you get to see like we come into it from different perspectives, and I'm, I'm definitely keen to watch some events that are maybe more nostalgic for you that I'd never seen before, Ooh. and and off, or, and maybe even some yeah, like yeah. mid '90s ones that maybe I was slightly getting out You're of. You're getting time. out of it, yeah. In the so mid-90s, yeah. I'm having fun doing this, and listen, we might not do this next month or the month after, but. We'll do it again. We'll definitely do it again. We'll definitely sure. do another one this year. Yeah, for uh, sure. I think that's realistic. We can yeah. at least do another one this year. So that's it for me. Anything else from you? No, nah, thanks, mate. That was awesome. No worries. I Good fun. This. Thank yeah. you so much for watching, guys. I Thank know you. this is a little bit different from what you normally see on uh, my channel and, and obviously a fair bit longer. Uh, but we certainly hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let us know in the comments. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you can hit us up on Instagram at Crusher Collects for a Chimwag. And if you've got any ideas of other events that you'd like to uh, you'd like us to look at? Hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm not going to sit through an event from 2015 or 16. Like I'm just give I'm, something more nostalgic. But like if you could, yeah. But but if you have events that you guys remember from your childhood or whatever it was, hmm. and you know anything up to say like 1996, I would happily give a watch. Yep. And uh, let's pick some fun events and let's do this again and uh, and just have some more fun with it. So yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah, for sure. It. Thank Alrighty you. guys, well until next time, like I said, definitely hope to hear from you in the comments or on Instagram at Crusher Collects. Hope you guys have a great day. And until the next one, cheers. cheers.